Meta ads retargeting in 2024. Let's get right into it. Before we get into the subject, who am I? So why you should listen to me? I'm Jim. I've been running ads for 10 years for Fortune 500 companies like these ones. And I'm going to teach you everything I know about Meta ads retargeting in 2024 so you can get sweet, sweet ROAS from your advertising budget. Keep your audiences big and stacked. Back in the days, we used to segment the retargeting audiences. We had a separate ad set which were targeting view content, separate ad set for website visitors, separate ad set who is targeting for add to cart but didn't purchase. And now this is completely different, guys. We want to stack them all together. You want to make the audiences as big as possible and put it into one ad set and target those people like that. The reason being is segmentation do not work anymore. The pixel is weaker. Even if you're using API tracking via Shopify, there's going to be leaks in the buckets. So the buckets are not going to be as accurate as you think it is. Let's say you have view content audience and separate add to cart audience and a separate initiated checkout audience. So these audiences are going to be leaking buckets. So the reason we combine them all together is we want to prevent as much as possible the leakage of the platform audiences. So we're going to stack them all together and create a general retargeting message for them. So this is goal number one. I'm going to cover what type of messaging you should do for your retargeting audience, which brings us to our second point, have unique content and creative for your retargeting audiences. The reason being is if you don't do this and if you put the existing, let's say top performing creatives into your retargeting audience, what happens is this is not a retargeting audience anymore. This is increased frequency prospecting campaign. So you're just showing the same ad to those people who already engaged with your ads, who already visited your website, the same exact ad. It is like asking a girl out to marry with you, even though she said no. Like you're going to go to her and say, will you marry me? She says, no, the next day you go, will you marry me? She says, no, again, of course, duh. Like, what do you expect? You have to get to know her. You have to ask her differently, right? If you really want to marry that girl. So this is the same strategy. We want to use different copy. They probably have some objections. They probably didn't want to buy with the current unique selling propositions that you propose to the customer. Now they have some questions in their head. They didn't buy because of one reason. Now you have to change your copy. Maybe talk about different angles of your product. Maybe they don't necessarily know how to use your product. Let's say your product is a little bit of a complex product that never been done before. Or maybe it's been done before, but not really utilized, not really popular. You want to have a full on video how to use that product. Maybe the main objection is the shipping. Shipping is too expensive. Then you can offer a free shipping for the people you're retargeting and that will solve the issue. Or maybe they don't even know how that t-shirt fits into them and you have a model saying this is mary she is six foot one 180 pounds this is how fits on her now you can make and she's wearing the large so they know if they're you know like same size of her then this is large and i should buy medium right this is how you clarify the product and erase any objections they might have so you can sell the product in the retargeting the copy has to be different as well if you put the same copy as you're prospecting this is not going to work I usually start my ad copy when i'm retargeting with these phrases and they work really well not sure question mark if you're still not sure about this product look at what others has to say about this if your product is more than 100 bucks for instance you can go and say I know this type of purchase may, may take some time, but take a look at how people can achieve certain results with the help of this product or service. So these are some examples. Utilize it for your industry and brand, and you will see great this results. This takes us to our point number three, which is extremely important. Use catalog ads. Yes, catalog ads do not only perform for prospecting, catalog ads also perform on retargeting. Because let's say a person visited a certain page on your website, the catalog automatically showed that product to that person. Let's say you have a catalog of 100, 200, 1,000 products. Let's say a person will like shoes, they're searching for shoes. Your catalog will automatically show shoes to those people because it's dynamic catalog ads. This is the main purpose of this. And still, guys, you have to use a specific copy for retargeting. Just acknowledge the relationship you had with that particular customer before. This is how you start your retargeting copy. And then you start handling the objections. And this will get you to sale using catalog ads. And if you're a service-based business, catalog ads, unfortunately, will not work for you. Catalog ads only works for D2C, direct-to-consumer, 
product-based businesses. This takes to our single most important part of this topic we target, the budgeting. So your budget, overall budget, let's say 100%, you should not spend more than 20% of your budget on retargeting. This is crucial. Then your frequency will skyrocket and you won't be profitable anymore. So this comes down to this, guys. How much is your product? How, what is your average order value? If your product, let's say minimum purchase value of the product is $200 and it can go as high as $1,000, then it can go above 20% of your overall Facebook ads budget. But if your product is less than $100, I do not suggest going over 20% of your budget for retargeting. I sometimes allocate less than 10% of my overall Facebook ads budget to my retargeting campaigns. The reason being is my prospecting is more important because when I get a first time buyer to my door, through my door, I will retarget them like crazy with my email marketing. And email marketing has the highest ROI. Every $1 you put in gives you 44X return on your investment. This is how powerful email marketing is. If I have the ability to get people through the door, I want to get cold prospects. Of course, you want to sell people who haven't bought from you before. But the key point is, guys, you have to watch out for the frequency. If the frequency goes above 15, this is a red zone. I'm still, still happy with 10 frequency, 8 frequency. Some people freak out when they reach 5 frequency, 4 frequency, but do not freak out, guys. I see really profitable and sustainable results with even 10 our eight frequency keep an eye on your frequency when you're increasing your overall percentage of the allocation of your retargeting budget rule of thumb is do not exceed 20 percent of your overall budget for your retargeting campaigns are there any exceptions yes there are there might be some particular cases that the more you increase your retargeting budget the more profitable it becomes then if that's the case keep an eye on the re frequency and your return on your ad spend and slowly increase but you will get to that point eventually around 25 percent of your budget on retargeting this takes us to our last point how should you structure your campaign when you're doing retargeting there are two ways of structuring your retargeting campaign one is having a separate retargeting campaign and the other one is having a one CBO campaign and under that CBO campaign you have your prospecting and retargeting separate to ad sets how I do it I personally like to have a separate campaign for retargeting but if you know your winning audiences and you've been profitable let's say you have one winning audience one broad audience separate ad sets in one prospecting campaign and you can throw that retargeting ad set audience as a separate ad set in that one campaign and you can turn the advantage budget on which makes it a cbo campaign campaign budget optimization so facebook will decide how much to spend on your retargeting how much to spend on your prospecting facebook will automatically spend around 20 percent of your budget on retargeting if they don't see that profitability they might not even spend more than 10 percent of your budget so you have to trust facebook if you're using cbo campaign and putting that retargeting audience in your overall prospecting campaign that is one strategy that works exceptionally well i sometimes do it if i have a winning campaign prospecting campaign i throw that retargeting in there and let facebook decide but if i'm still in the testing phase if i still don't know the perfect budget allocation for my retargeting campaigns i have a separate campaign and i want to control every single thing how much i spend on prospecting how much i spend on retargeting this is a great structure as well and i do it time and time again and i see great results what is the great result i'm talking about over 10x dollars yes it can be that profitable guys if you get anything from this video please drop down a like below this will help me so youtube algorithm knows this video is valuable and i'm giving this away completely for free don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one